The Celtics are heading back to the NBA Finals. Congratulations to the Celtics on reaching the NBA Finals again. Let's talk about the series that just happened between them and the Indiana Pacers and maybe a little preview for the NBA Finals, even though we don't exactly know who's going to the Finals yet, although it looks like the Mavericks. So first of all, in this series, I mean, the games came down to literally the last minute, the last 20 seconds, all these games were a one possession game. This series was so close where I mean like, if the ball bounces the wrong way one time for one shot for Boston, we could still be looking at an extended series, maybe game five, game six. But the Celtics were able to get all the big stops in all the big moments. And if you watched my video yesterday or the day before whenever I posted it, and if you didn't watch that video, make sure you go watch it. But I talked about how the Pacers and the Timberwolves are making the same mistakes. And the mistakes that they're making is they will both have leads in the games, but due to their inexperience, they will have late game turnovers and really, really crucial bad turnovers because it will lead to them losing the game, which happens again today to the Pacers. And part of that has to do with the Pacers, like I said, inexperience and not understanding the time and moment and making plays that you wouldn't make if you're an experienced team. But it also has to do with the fact that the Boston Celtics are experienced and they knew how to stop the Pacers from making the plays they were trying they were trying to make in those clutch moments. Like Jalen Brown at the end of the game today. Another turnover. Unfortunately, Andrew Nemhard had the turnover with Drew Holiday. And then he had a turnover again with Jalen Brown. Well, actually, Jalen Brown blocked the shot, rather. But the point is, like, he knew exactly what Andrew Nemhard was going to do before he even did it. And it was just kind of like he read the defense or the offense so easily. Let's talk about Jalen Brown for a minute, though. As you can see here, he is holding the Eastern Conference Finals MVP trophy. <laughs> and he was honestly, by far and away, the best player in this series. Yes, from the Pacers standpoint, obviously Pascal Siakam was amazing. TJ McConnell was amazing. But obviously the MVP does not go to the losing team. And then from the Celtics standpoint, Derek White had a really good series. Like he had so many good defensive plays, but Jalen Brown, first of all, hit the big three to tie the game in game one, which honestly changed the whole series. Think about it. The whole series was changed from that big three. Then he had the big 40 point game in game two, I believe. I think it was game two. He had the 40 point game and they showed his stats on the screen. He averaged almost 30 points per game on like 54% shooting. He made all the big threes. He hit that big pull-up three from the top of the key. If you remember during the game today, he hit that big three in the corner. He was hitting everything that he needed to hit. He was so aggressive. Did you guys see the one where he went behind the back and then I think he shot a step back three on that play and it went in? I've never seen Jalen Brown do that. Or maybe like I've just missed him doing that. Like I feel like we don't see Jalen Brown go behind his back the way he did. Like, I don't know. Like, I just feel like I haven't seen that from him. I feel like you could tell Jalen Brown really worked on his game. Like, watching Jalen Brown in this series, he looks so much more polished. I mean, like, obviously throughout the year, we've seen that he has grown as a player. But what I'm saying is, like, you could really see the details in the series. His aggressiveness was not reckless. And I feel like in times in the past, especially, like, in the NBA Finals in 2022, although he had some really good moments, there was times where he would be aggressive which was good but it was kind of reckless and i don't mean that in a disrespectful way i just mean like it would lead to turnovers and kind of what they did to the pacers what the warriors were doing to them like they would drive to the paint and the warriors knew exactly how to stop that play and like they would just turn the ball over and jalen brown was part of that which is why i'm saying now when jalen brown knows how to like go to the basket and be aggressive, but make sure that the ball doesn't get stolen and he'll get a good shot and he'll just push people around. He's strong. And like I said, he is cooking from three. He's confident. Like Jalen Brown deserved that trophy and Jalen Brown has been incredible this playoff run. I just want to give Jalen Brown some praise because he has really stepped it up and he has polished his game. And this is part of why the Celtics, you know, are in this position that they're in because they have Jalen Brown as their second option and he's playing really good. Shout out to Drew Holiday and Derek White. I've talked about them, you know, in a couple previous videos, talking about all the defensive plays they make. They're so unselfish. They hit the shots just at the right time. Like 
they embrace their role. They, you know, they're not hungry to be the star, rather. Like, they just want to win. So shout out to them. They always do the right thing. And shout out to Al Horford. He has, you know, struggled here and there to find his shot. And, you know, he's gone in and out of slumps. He had that huge game in this series, though, where he made seven threes or nine threes, something like that. Like, he was cooking from three. I think that was game three. So shout out to Al Horford. He's back in the NBA Finals, and now he has an opportunity to potentially get a ring. So now on to the NBA Finals. It's looking like it's going to be the Mavericks because no team has ever come back from an 0-3 deficit, and I don't think that's going to happen here, especially given the fact that they're playing Luka and Kyrie, two of the best closers in the game. I believe they even said that they're number one statistically in clutch time. You don't even have to know that statistic to just know with your eye test to know that they are in the top of that category. So I think it's going to be the Mavs in the finals. It may be a sweep, maybe a five-game series. We'll see. But now let's talk about the matchup, potentially, of the Mavericks versus the Celtics. Or you know what? Let's not even talk about the Mavericks because, again, it's not a done deal. So let's just talk about the Celtics in the finals and what they need to do in order to get their championship. Whoever the Celtics play, and again, when we find out who exactly it is, it'll be easier to give an actual matchup preview and what the keys are. But some of the general keys that the Celtics need to do is, first of all, not turn the ball over. That is goes without saying. But again, the last time they were in the NBA Finals, there were a lot of turnovers happening. So turning the ball over is number one. Number two, Drew Holiday and Derek White are going to be key in this matchup in the NBA Finals because they are going to have to guard whichever backcourt it is. And Luka and Kyrie are a handful. Nobody can guard them, period. So Drew Holiday and Derek White will have their hands full on the defensive end. And then if it was the Timberwolves, you got Anthony Edwards and obviously Mike Conley as well. But Anthony Edwards, that's a handful in himself. So either way, I think those two are going to be key to the Celtics winning the finals is how much can they inhibit the offensive player on the other team. Because as great of defenders as they are, if the backcourt of the other team is getting 60 combined between the two of them, that's not going to look very good for the Celtics because that's a ton of points they just can't be giving up. We still don't know the status of Porzingis, and that is a big factor because it gives them a competitive advantage that not really anybody in the league has a seven foot three guy who could shoot the three and extend the defense all the way out on the perimeter. And whether you're playing the Mavericks or the Timberwolves, to force Rudy Gobert, for example, for the Timberwolves, out of the paint to guard on the perimeter, Porzingis, that gets rid of some of their competitive advantage, you know, his ability to rim protect and block shots. And then same with the Mavericks with Daniel Gafford or Derek Lively. Not only are they away from the paint, where they're not exactly, you know, especially Derek Lively as a rookie, he hasn't guarded a ton on the perimeter yet, but also it prevents them from being a rim protector and blocking shots and getting offensive rebounds, or defensive rebounds, rather. So we'll see who it ends up being, but congratulations to the Celtics again. They are going to the NBA Finals.